Well, hey there, it's Chris again at White Oaks Farm, Levels, West Virginia. Time to harvest beans. It's real easy. You just get down on your hands and knees and start picking them. This particular variety is uh, Cantare. It's an heirloom variety. I like to pick them relatively small because I think they're more tender and tasty that way. Also, that way I don't get so many bugs in them. These are a bush bean. <coughs> Excuse me. I usually grow uh, pole beans, and I thought I'd bought pole beans this year, but it turns out that both varieties of beans that I purchased are bush beans, so I got to crawl. The reason I like pole beans is I can stand up to pick them, <laughs> for the most part, anyway. But these are producing very well and they're quite tasty. And uh, I've frozen over three pounds of them already. And I plan on freezing some more. Um, tomorrow I will probably make some, a uh, few pints of dilly beans, hot dilly beans, because I like them, they're, they're a pickle. Um, my lady doesn't really care much for pickles, so I don't make a lot. I've had to figure out ways of making small recipes because most canning recipes uh, are for pints and quarts and pints and quarts just don't cut it when you're one person eating it. <laughs> you can see how productive these are and these are, like I said, I'm picking them small because that's the way I like them. This next variety is called uh, Red Swan, and it produces a red potted bean, which is really nice because they're easy to see. You don't have to search for them like you do with the green potted varieties. Um, the red doesn't stay on them when you cook them. They turn the same green as all beans when cooked, but they're real pretty to start with. And again, I, I had thought I had been buying, or was buying, pole beans, but apparently I misread the catalog. Doesn't matter. These are good beans too. They're both, both varieties are very tasty. Anyways, you don't really want to watch me pick all these beans. I'll cut back in when uh, I'm done and have them go in to process them and weigh them. Bye-bye. Hey there, I'm back. This is today's take of beans. I'd guesstimate someplace around a pound once I get them processed. I just throw them into cold water, snap the stem end off, and throw them in a strainer. And that's about it. Takes a little while. I get bored standing here, but uh, it goes quickly, actually. These um, red swan beans are so somewhat clammy or sticky, um, and so sometimes I have to rinse them more than once. But I'll process these and then I'll start a pot of water. Well, actually, I'm going to start a pot of water um, now so that it's ready to um, blanch them when I get done with snapping them. So anyways, I'll be back in a little while. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm back. Got my water boiling. Got some icy cold water for, for cooling them after they're blanched. These are beans I picked um, a day or so ago. These unfortunately got pushed to the top back of the fridge and uh, some of them got frozen, which is real sad. I had to sort them again. But the rest of these, well, yeah, the rest of these look good. And in they go to the blanching water. They go in, wait for it to uh, start bubbling again, not just from the beans, but from the bottom. And then you time it for three minutes. After three minutes, I'll scoop them out into the cold water to stop the, the uh, blanching process. And then I'll put them in a colander in the sink to drain, and I'll do the next batch. The ones I picked today, I'm going to use tomorrow to make those dilly beans I talked about. So, anyways, I'm signing off. I'll, maybe I'll show you how I package them. Bye-bye. And there's three minutes up, so here we go. I just start scooping them out. 
Notice how the red beans turned green. But, uh, might be interested about blanching. Blanching is you just heat the beans just enough to stop all the enzymes from uh, causing oxidation and uh, ruining the flavor while they're in the freezer. Um, and then you want to stop the cooking because you don't want to fully cook the beans. You just want them to be a uh, um, <clears throat> have those enzymes that are in the beans denatured. And as soon as it comes back to a rolling boil, which it's almost at now, I'll add the last of these beans and uh, get them blanching. That looks like a good boil. In you go, beans. And we'll see you in three. And another batch. Processed, ready to go into the uh, cold water. I could use a, a uh, basket that uh, sits down into the water, but I find that that causes a lot of splashing when things get boiling, so I'd just rather use this uh, little hand strainer. works just fine. Anyways, that's uh, blanching the beans. I got to get set up for uh, packaging them, which means I got to drain them into a colander, and then they go into quart size bags. And I usually put um, enough for just one meal in each bag. Um, you can also spread them on a tray and put them in the freezer, let them freeze, and then separate them and package them in larger bags so that you can pour them out as needed. That's a pain in the butt for me, so I don't bother doing that. Anyways, we'll be back in a little while. Back. It's time to package these things. Uh, um, I usually do about eight ounces per bag, and that should be enough for a meal for the two of us. So I weigh them out like this. You don't have to be precise, but why not? <laughs> okay, so then they go into, these are quart, quart Ziplocs, freezer bags. I'd put them up in pints, but I couldn't find pint bags. Yeah, just put them in. Shake them down to the bottom. <clears throat> and then I take this plastic tube I have, and I zip it closed against the tube and suck out all the air. Pull the tube out as I'm sucking, and there's a bag of beans for uh, the freezer. And I'll just repeat, repeat, repeat till the beans are packaged up. And uh, sometimes I label them, sometimes I don't. They're pr it's pretty obvious what they are. Anyways, that's how I pick, blanch, and uh, package up my beans. <laughs> Rooster crowing. Tomorrow, maybe I'll do a thing on, uh, on making dilly beans. Anyways, it's Chris at White Oaks Farm. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.